Shika, tell us about yourself. My name is Myshika Ross. I was born in Los Angeles, California. So um, I have six other siblings and I am the youngest girl. I have three children, um, 23, 21, and my youngest is 19. I'm also a grandma. Hi, Raina. <laughs> so, um, but uh, I'm a student, I'm a business owner, um, I'm a writer, and right now I'm working on my bachelor's degree um, for business administration, which is so crazy is because I've always enjoyed writing, and I'm in school for business administration instead of journalism. But so when did you first start writing? I first started writing in um, the third grade. It was crazy because for my birthday, I think my stepmom gave me a journal. And um, man, that was like a blessing because anytime I was going through something, I would um, go write in this journal and um, I've been writing ever since then and that has been like an outlet for, for me and also writing has become like a healing process for me. It helps me think things through, it helps me to gather my ideas and my thoughts and um, I always tell people that I am so blessed to have gotten that gift because it's brought me to this point which is my first book out called 25 years to life so i'm i'm really glad that i received that as a gift so what inspired you to write your book 25 years to life um i have to say there are people over the course of the last i want to say five years and I would go and speak at different places and people would always say, you know, you should write a book, you should share your story and um, you should get it out there. And I really shied away from the question to stand all the way in my truth and in my story. I wasn't ready to share my story because people, when you share your story, your flaws, people look down upon you, they judge you, they put a magnifying glass on you. And that was, that was a fear for me. I was afraid of what people might think of me or what people were going to think of me if I shared my story. So for the longest time, I just, I wasn't ready to share my story. There were some things in, that I was still dealing with personally, some, still some things that um, I was healing with and on, and I just wasn't ready yet um, at that particular time to write the book. Um, but as time went on and I thought of the ideas that people were mentioning and that, you know, your inspiration is going to give people hope and you're not the first and you're not the last and you should share your story. And I just began to think that, wait a minute, this book is so not about just me. It's about inspiring other people and um, giving them that hope to move on and to heal and giving them they're encouraged to heal and motiv motivating them to think about the things that has gone on in their life and how can they use it for a positive instead of a negative because for a while that's what I was doing was using the uh, the negative things to keep me from writing the book. So I'm glad that I got past that and wrote, you know, the book 25 Years to Life and I pour out in my book um, so that I can help another person. So tell us a little bit about your book. So, 25 Years to Life, it talks about a 13-year-old girl who was involved in a domestic violence situation and is facing 25 years to life. That 13-year-old girl is myself. In this book, you will find that I am talking about teenage pregnancy, at-risk youth, addiction, depression, suicide, uh, being a felon, um, being raised by your grandparent, a broken home, living in the projects, um, low income, just a host of different things. So that's what 25 Years to Life talks about, which is my story. So if maybe you can't directly relate to the book 25 Years to Life, maybe your friend, your neighbor, a co-worker, a family member, or somebody that you know will be able to relate to this book. It also talks about divorce and 
sing being single and again a number of different things women men teenage girl teenage boy would be able to relate to this book 25 years to life so Mashiko, when your book was released how did you feel oh my goodness i have to say that i was so scared and so happy all at the same time I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what people were going to say. I don't know. I was just like, oh my God, finally. Because writing the book was a healing process for me, even though I felt like I had healed from a lot of things. What I didn't realize in writing the book during that time that there were still some things that I hadn't healed all the way on because there were times when I was writing the book and literally I would have to just stop because I was crying and I was just so full and um, I didn't realize that there were parts of me that was still um, hurt emotionally. There were still some things that I had, I guess, suppressed, should I say. And writing the book just brought everything to the forefront, just to the surface. And so it was even that much more healing in the, the writing of the book that I am so thankful happened. Um, so again, I was nervous. I was excited. I was happy all at the same time because I knew that this, I knew and I know that this book is going to help many of uh, people not just not just women not just men but um even teenagers and um I'm just like oh my goodness so I'm really thankful for this piece and I'm really thankful that I'm in a healthy space in my life and in my mind and mentally to be able to put this piece of work out there because it means a lot to me to help another person. So if this book only helped one person, I feel like that my job is done or I've succeeded at what I wanted to do. So um, I'm just really happy and, and joyful in that way for, for others to read it. Because if I was receiving healing during the process and writing the book, I can just imagine what other people are going to feel in reading the book. Can you tell us about your challenges in getting your first book published? Some of the challenges. Oh, okay. Let me, I want to mention this. I'll say this. I remember before I even started writing the book, um, I was over at Barnes and Noble's and I was doing a fundraiser for my organization called the Lighthouse of Restoration Organization. And during that fundraiser, they had um, other uh, authors there. And I met this author and this publisher, and his name is Wayne Gully. Shout out to Wayne. Um, and it was so crazy because when I, he and I, we started talking and um, he had written children's books and I began asking questions about his children's books. And then he shared with me that he had a publishing company. And he also shared with me that he worked for Southern California Edison for quite some time. And I was like, oh, my God, this is so crazy because my father worked for Southern California Edison. And I had this thought in my head about writing the book. Now, mind you, I hadn't started. I hadn't started the book. I hadn't started writing. I hadn't started started the process at all. So when Wayne and I met, it was just like to me, I felt like it was confirmation. So we exchanged information, and um, when I finally uh, got back in contact with Wayne, I was like, "Hey, you know what? I want to, you know, I, I want to move forward. I want to write my book." And he said, you know, my chic, I think all that is great, but I decided to go back into the corporate world, so I'm not publishing any more books. And I was like, oh my God, are you serious? So it was crazy because it's like my heart just sank because I was like, wait a minute, I met this guy. He's written books and he has his publishing company. Now when I decide to go forward with the process, he's no longer doing it. So I was like bummed out. But the crazy thing of it is because something just kept telling me, Marshika, 
keep writing, keep moving forward, keep writing, keep moving forward. And even though I hadn't found a publisher, I just kept working on my book. I reached out to several different publishing companies, no answer, no follow-up email, and I was like, oh my goodness, like what is going on? So I even though during that point I just I kind of got discouraged, but I just kept pressing forward. I kept working on the book, kept moving forward, kept looking for publishers. And um, literally, I wasn't getting any phone calls back, no follow up, no nothing. It was like I kept running into dead ends. So time went by and there was somebody that came into my office and she mentioned about her book. And I was like, oh, really? That's cool. That's awesome. Congratulations. So who is your publisher? Like, who are you going through? So she said, oh, I'm going through WAG Publishing. And um, that's Wayne Gully. And I was like, oh, my God, shut up. So she was like, yeah, you know, he started back the publishing process. And I was like, oh. <laughs> it was crazy. So I got back in contact with him. And he was like, yeah, my Sheikah, sure, you know, come aboard. Where are you at? You know, in the process of writing your book. So I almost felt like I was supposed to work with him. Like he was supposed to publish my book. But I am so glad that I kept going forward in the process because had I not kept going in the process, when she did tell me about her book, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have been ready. So that was one of the big challenges for me. And I'm glad that everything worked out. So, yeah. Do you have any advice to give to aspiring writers? I would like to say to anybody that is writing or would like to write, which is something that was told to me by um, Wayne Gully, which is uh, the gentleman who published my book. And it was so profound because he told me, I said, how am I going to know when my book is finished? How am I going to know that I'm finished writing? And his answer was, keep writing until you feel like you've said everything that you needed to say. Right. That it was perfect. It was perfect for me at that time. Right until you feel like you have said everything that you want to say and need to say. So that's what I would say to any writers, anybody who is interested in in writing a book or um, a, a piece or whatever you want to call it. Another thing that worked well for me is that I tell people when um, when you have that urge to write, take advantage of that moment. And just dump. And what I mean by dumping is sit down and just type it out, write it out, whatever works best for you. That's what I did. Whenever I had a moment where I was just full of ideas or different things I wanted to write for the book, I just would dump. I didn't care about the, the punctuation, the spelling, because you can always go back to that. You want to capture that moment because you don't never know when that particular moment will come around again. And you want it in its realest and rawest um, form. And again, you don't know when those moments are going to come up. So you got to take advantage of those moments because there were times where... I didn't write for a couple of months because I just wasn't in that space. But when I did sit down and, and take advantage of that moment that I was in when I felt like writing, man, it was like clockwork. It just, I just poured and it just was just, I was just like, whoo, I just felt really relieved after doing that. So I would thank you to everybody that has supported 25 Years to Life. Thank you to anybody who has shared it. Um, on social media, uh, text about it, any type of support that any of you guys have shown um, in any way, the book signings, the, the reviews of the book, I just want to say thank you because what you're doing is that you're helping me give somebody else hope by getting the, getting the word out about 25 years to life. I would like to... Um, I would like to give a shout out because my book is dedicated to my kids, Ramon, Jonathan, and Ariane, for riding with me, um, for sticking by me, even though I was trying to figure this parenting thing out. Um, they have really been there to support me, to encourage me, and to help me keep pushing through because this is so not just about me, but I've been striving 
for for us for a long time. So my book, 25 Years to Life, is dedicated to my kids and um, anybody who have um, rode with me throughout this process, thank you, because it means a lot to me. Um, it's helped me grow. It's helped me look at things. Shout out to um, people who have given me constructive criticism. I appreciate you. I greatly appreciate any platform that I've been on to allow me to encourage and give the next person hope. I so appreciate that. But most importantly, I thank God for allowing me to be here because there is absolutely no way that I could be standing and sharing my story in my right mind and a healthy mindset with you without the grace of Jesus Christ in my life. So I can't say that enough. And I am so thankful that I am still sane and whole and complete through such um, a devastating process of going through to write to give you this. Okay. So this coming September 30th from 6 to 9 at Barnes and Noble at 2191 North Rainbow here in Las Vegas, Nevada, I am having a book signing. Come out and meet me. I would love to meet you. I can't wait to see you.